good afternoon, evening, or morning, depending on where you're checking in. This is Being With Dr. Z. I'm Zaria Davis. Today, I have with me the lovely Mary Evans. Um, Mary is the radio producer for Reentry Stories and co-founder of Journalism Lab in Dayton, Ohio. And we had the pleasure of meeting in some of my work um, here in Ohio. And I know we have some awesome things that we're going to be doing in the future. And I'm looking forward to it because, <laughs> yes, yes, it's just like just so few and far between. So it's like whenever we can bring great minds together, I'm, I'm all for it. So today I just want to um, take some time to learn more about the work that you're doing um, with the reentry stories, as well as with the journalism lab and anything else that you'd like to share. Um, so I want to give you an opportunity first just to share a little bit more about yourself, just so our audience knows who, who they're listening to today. Yes, so um, my name is Mary Evans. I like the pronoun she, her, they. Um, I'm formerly incarcerated. Um, back in 2010, I was sentenced to an eight-year sentence um, out of Gallia County, Ohio. Um, and while I was incarcerated, I just knew that I wanted to do something different. It wasn't my first number. Um, and I was just kind of tired. Um, and I knew that I could be better than what I was being. I just um, was going through a lot of trauma and, you know, sometimes you pick different things, um, things that you probably shouldn't be doing um, to get through those traumas instead of seeking help. So um, while I was like thinking about what I could do, I grad I pushed towards more to education. Um, I graduated from Sinclair twice. And I wrote to a bunch of colleges because I did not want to return to my hometown. And I was like hoping that someone would give me a chance. And the way that God works is um, Antioch College came in with a program and they had just started a prison justice initiative. And um, I wrote to them and with the help of Professor Emily Steinmetz and a few seniors, um, Amelia Gonzalez, uh, Sarah Goldstein, Rebecca Smith, Rachel Siders. There are just so many I can name. They helped me to get the admissions team to come inside the Dayton Correctional Institution and do my interview. And I actually got a full ride. So I pretty much paroled to Antioch College in 2017. And I've been hitting the ground running ever since. I've um, been letting everyone know that our return citizen community is, you know, part of society. We're very productive and we're ready to abolish and we're ready to do a bunch of things that we can do with the judicial system. And that's just been kind of what I've been doing since I'm. Um, going to Antioch and coming back and graduating and coming back to work there um, with reentry stories. Um, I got an opportunity to get a job at WYSO 91.3 FM in Yellow Springs um, while I was a student. And um, I guess they liked what I was doing. And I proposed um, a show. I was like, you know, I want to give people like myself a voice. I'm already here and I'm making noise and I want my community members to be able to. So they like the idea. We're going into the fourth season and that's amazing. Um, I'm one of the first undergraduates at Antioch College to ever do that. And it's an NPR affiliated show, a radio station. So, you know, my show plays with NPR programming. So I get a lot of listeners and that's amazing. Um, and then during COVID, um, that kind of put a damper on freelancing and, you know, that kind of work. Like you were mentioning, we were talking before we got on, you were talking about how you're doing these in person. And so I was like, kind of lonely. And um, I guess there was a few other gentlemen in Dayton that was feeling the same way. And we created uh, the journalism lab and we uh, were umbrellaed underneath the Dayton Collaboratory. Um, Peter Beckendorf, the CEO there, and we actually got an opportunity to offer an eight-week class to um, refugees and immigrants from Congo, and that was exciting. We got to do that through Catholic Social Services. We had no branding, no advertising, nothing. It was just word of mouth about the work that we were doing. We were offering um, workshops, which we still are, um, and I can share that information with you so you can share it with the viewers. If there's anyone that's interested in community reporting, we do um, a bi-weekly, well, a bi-monthly. We meet twice a month on Thursdays for about an hour and a half, and we go through all the steps to show you how to be a freelancer from long-form writing, audio editing, um, audio journalism, videography, photography, and how to pitch. And we also have people from Dayton Daily News and um, the Xenia Gazette and 
Bloomington Journal, different newspaper outlets that are looking for these stories and it's a way for people to monetize. And so it was a way for us to help people be sustainable through COVID because it was so hard for people to, you know, get money, especially with freelancing and things like that. So I'm excited about that. We're going into like our fourth bureau round, which I'm excited about. We've gotten people who never even thought that they could do this kind of work published and they're on their fourth and fifth article and very comfortable. And I just want people to know that, you know, ordinary people can do this work and they should because everyone has something that is important to them. And I feel like if we all knew what was important to each other and respected that, we could get a lot further. And I think that that's the way that we can, you know, decrease some of the divisiveness that we see throughout the communities. I mean, they're even within the communities. We have people that are divisive within the re-entry community. A lot of people feel like, you know, they don't have the energy or the time to be um, activists. And it's like, but you know what it's like, and I feel like you should do that work. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, so that's a whole nother subject I can go into. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That sounds like amazing work. Like, and it's so, it sounds so empowering, right? Like to give, allow people in that space to have a voice in, in different ways that they may have never realized that they had a voice. So, wow, yeah. that's awesome. So when you think about um, your work with the re-entry stories, what would be a myth that you would dispel related to people who are currently incarcerated or people who are formerly incarcerated? Okay, so the myth breaker that blew my mind and actually was like something that, um, and it's like one of my favorite interviews is Terry uh, Terry Nunn's interview, and the 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 lie is you have to only, you can only get one felony expunged, and it can only be one. Well, that is false. You can get several taken off your record and sealed, even juvenile. And that gentleman in that interview on reentry stories, he tells you the whole process he went through and even retained his lawyer free through an organization out of Cincinnati. Um, and he was from Franklin County. Um, and the work that he was doing in the community was so impactful that a prosecutor, um, an auditor, all kinds of different people that were working in the courthouse wrote letters of recommendation for him and all of his felonies were expunged and sealed. And so that's amazing, especially as a black man, because there's so many hindrances anyway. So just imagine the stigma of being a, you know, um, having a felony on your record. So now he has an opportunity to actually get funding for housing and get loans and don't have to worry about explaining these things or checking a box. And so like that was one of the myth breakers for me. And I think that people um, sometimes think, well, I'm in here on my fourth number. There's no hope. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. That's so awesome. Yeah, that's, and I think that is something like, I know that we've had, there's been some conversations lately because there were some changes in like the law around acts, you know, who could apply, how many, you know, how many felonies. And so thank you for sharing that because I think it's, it's so important for people to know and become aware. I think there's so many different myths out there. You know, we always talk about the voting myth that, you know, you can't vote, can't vote but, yeah. right? So I think that this is another one that people need to know. Like, even if you have multiple felonies, you need to look into, you know, if you are eligible to get those expunged. So thank you so much for sharing that. So you shared a lot about like the work that you're doing. And so my question to you is, you know, when you think about the population you serve, like what has motivated you to serve that particular population, like, and why? Because I know that some of those people don't really even deserve to be in there, even though their crime may feel like that. But I feel like a lot of these women who have life sentences that have done every program that ODRC has ever created have been in there 20 some plus years. Um, I know a woman who's been in there longer than I've walked the earth and you know was in there back when she drove the trash trucks herself and there was you know you were allowed to have your own clothing i mean i'm talking this woman's been in there almost 42 years and that's what keeps me motivated knowing that there's people in there that should be out and then when i go inside and do the volunteer work that i do too and they tell me that they're living through me and they're thankful for me and that they're glad that i you know was someone who I said I was and comes back, that's what keeps me motivated because I know what it's like for people to be like, oh, I'll remember you or I got you when I get out. And you never get that. And so to see someone be consistent with that since they've returned, you know, I even got to go back inside as a student 
at Antioch College. You know, I was going to make a way somehow, some way to go in and help, you know, as much as I could, because living inside there for seven years, it doesn't matter how much staff, how much programming, they still need help in there. They need people to come in there and treat people like human beings because that's who they are. And then that affects them and motivates them to be something better, you know, so that's what makes me do that. That's what keeps me motivated. That's so awesome. Yeah, I, you know, I went to Dayton Correctional like right before COVID was set to go back in and do some programming through my nonprofit and it was like the world shut down. And so now my goal is to, you know, I don't know what the, I have to, we'll have to talk offline about the rules, but I really want to get in there and do some programming with the women. Like I told them when I went for this re-entry event that I would be back and I want to be able to, you know, follow up with that and, you know, gain access to be able to support. So I'm glad that you are going in, that you're volunteering and that you're staying committed to what you said that you were going to do, because you're right. A lot of times people say that they'll follow up and, you know, life happens, people go home and, you know, and a lot of times they want to leave it behind them, right? They don't want to think about it. Um, I don't know how that happens. I don't know how that's even possible. I've been trying to figure that out for a long time. I've been home February, it'll be five years. And I'm still like, mm, I still think about, you know, people that I left behind. And thankfully, most of them have gotten out. But they're definitely, like you said, people with pretty lengthy sentences yeah. that, you know, are just, they're still in there, you know. And so the fight continues until they have the opportunity to come home as well. So thank you for sharing that. So my question next is, um, what are your hopes to achieve with like your organizations and the projects that you're working on right now? Well, two, uh, well, three of the organizations that I work with, one being the Journalism Lab, another one being um, the Credit Scott King Center, um, Cultural Free, uh, Cultural and Intellectual Center for Freedom at, out at Antioch College, and um, Story Chain from Yellow Springs. Um, those are the three that I feel that I'm going to be most dedicated to. The DEI work that they're doing at the Credit Scott King Center is amazing. Um, getting to the root was brought to us here by one of the alums at Antioch College. Her name is uh, Ms. Shadia Alvarez. Um, it's amazing how the world works. Um, I got introduced to Felicia Chappelle. Um, she's alumni at Antioch College and I got the opportunity to work with her, but it's curriculum that her father created with a lot of his peers. And so to know that it was created back then and it's still being used to this day and I get an opportunity to be a part of that, um, that's amazing. I definitely want to focus on that. I feel like, you know, once we can break some race, undo some racism, we'll get a lot more done in the justice system as well. Um, with Story Chain, you know, that was a program I participated in when I was incarcerated, getting to read books to my children and just the, the mission of what that program does. Not only does it increase and promote adult literacy, but it also helps with the reunification process and it helps children have some sort of connection with their parents while they're incarcerated. And so I'm um, focusing on that. And then of course, you know, community reporting journalism, that's my heart, my passion, my soul. And so um, I hope to, you know, get a lot more people of color interested in, in this kind of thing and letting them know that, you know, you're validated and don't ever let anyone tell you that you're not and your voice matters and let us show you how you can, you know, get your voice heard and also monetize and be sustainable. And so those are like the, the three that mean the most to me at this moment, at this point. Awesome. Yeah, that those are those are important things. So thank you. Thank you for what you're already doing and what you will do, because I know it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, so what would you like for the people watching? Like if you had to leave something behind any type of jewels for them, like what would you like to leave for those people watching or listening right now? Um, like three things, please register to vote no matter what. Um, especially if you're in the state of Ohio, because you can. I, I'm registered um, and very active um, in knowing my local politicians and what they're doing and how it's going to be better for the return citizen community. Um, and I'd also say, don't pass up on an opportunity that allows you to better yourself because you feel like you might not make it. You don't know until you step out on faith. You know, I knew nothing about Yellow Springs. I knew nothing about Antioch College for real. I just knew that it was a bunch of hippies. Well, you know, that's what they say and, you know, all these things and, you know, taking that chance and just actually putting myself and giving my whole self to something good um, and taking every opportunity and every chance that came our way, even when I felt like 
I don't know if I belong here. I did it anyway, because I do belong here, because if I didn't, these people wouldn't have brought me here. Mm -hmm. So if you're somewhere and you have an opportunity, you wouldn't be there if you wasn't supposed to be there, so take it. And then last thing I would tell people is just never give up on yourself. Even when it's, I mean, sometimes it takes everything for me to get up out of bed, but just do it. You got to, you got to do something, you know. Whether it's, what's the theme of MLK this year? Do something from the front lines to the sidelines. You're just going to have to do it, you know? So that's what I'd leave. Thank you. Thank you. So how can people reach you or support your work? Um, well, if you'd like to follow me, I'm on any podcasting app, every one of them, or you can go to WISO.org and you could subscribe there to reentry stories. That would be great. And just um, any kind of nonprofit you know, organization that helps with reentry, um, whether it's mental health or housing, if you can do a volunteer, uh, you know, volunteer give, that would be great. Um, and you can always find me at, um, you can find me on Facebook under my name, or you could just uh, email me too. I mean, I'm, I'm open to whatever, however people want to communicate. I talk to a lot of people through Facebook Messenger. Um, it's more, you know, all those social media platforms and messenger, you're more prone to reach me there. And I don't use any aliases. It's just Mary Evans. You see my face. So it's going to be that on Facebook though. I have a picture of a woman standing in front of a police officer, smoking a cigarette. It's an older picture. Um, a lot of other people use it too. So that's the only one that does not have my portrait as a profile. Um, and I will respond back. And if you need help with anything, um, I have friends all over different parts of Ohio. So if you're in Ohio, um, Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Dayton, um, Gallia County, Megs, I've got resources, whether it's recovery, housing, or just mental health, or, you know, you need food, anything. So just feel free to reach out that way. I don't mind. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank you for um, just all the work that you're doing. You know, um, I'm glad that we were able to connect and, and meet. It was so funny because people are like, oh, you need to meet Mary. You need to, like for a while. And I was like, OK, I'm going to meet her at some point. And so I'm glad that I have. And I'm glad that um, we have been talking about like how we can collaborate and do some work, especially here in Southwest Ohio and throughout the state. And so just really looking forward to next steps with that and, and supporting the amazing work that you're doing in a space that, like you said, there isn't always a lot of presence of like black people in that space um, around journalism and, you know, radio and things of that sort, especially from a perspective of like providing educational information. So I'm glad that um, you were there and also really pouring into other people within the community to have a voice within those spaces as well. So yeah. thank you for joining me and just look forward to seeing what comes next. Yeah. I'm thankful for Kim Elliott for introducing us too and making sure that it happens. So yes, yes. shout out to her in the four <laughs> seven for sure. And thank yes. you for having me. Thank yes. You for having thank me. you.